Hey guys, this is Rock King 3, bringing you the live commentary, Forza 5. This is going to be King of the Road series, and this is Rowdy Things 54 Mustang. Um, I am just making sure that I didn't have any assists on, and traction control is off. And we are going to start the race. I have a 525th track time on here, so we will see how it goes. What I plan on doing is showing you the first couple of laps, and then the 10th lap, because I run 10 laps of your guys' cars. Obviously the first one's kind of a throwaway, but I'll run 10 full laps to give your guys, you know, give myself a chance to kind of get acclimated to your, to your car and your build, and hopefully run a good time in there. The view didn't quite look right there. So this is Rowdy Thing 54. He's a gentleman I've been racing with on the Racing with Rot series and catch him from time to time. Good racer, he puts good times down. And now we'll see how well he builds cars. So far the car is really easy to drive. Feels like it might have race tires on it. Very smooth. I think it needs just a, since it does stick so well, we could probably use just a little bit more oversteer, but let's wait until the tires get all warmed up and see what happens. Looks like I have a Trans Am on the road here. Nice. It's just as fast and it handles really, really well, so that's a good start. Oh, that was probably my driving there. Really. Use a little more RPMs. Alright, as I get around at the end of this, after I finish this lap, I'm going to cut over to the final 11th lap, where we'll see the final fastest time for this uh, 95 Mustang. So we'll be splicing all those. I'm going to hit more RPMs, I think. I'm going to have to push this car a little bit harder, I think. More RPMs. I definitely have some time I can make up here from, from a driving perspective. All right, we'll see you guys in the la uh, 11th lap. Okay, and we're back for the last lap. I was able to beat it one time. What I've learned about this car is driving it smoother is better. So when I first left you, I was trying to keep the RPMs revved up. And what I found out with this car is kind of the lower gear that you're in, like, like right here, I'm gonna stay in third, I'm not gonna go to second. The more traction I get, the better speed I get, the better momentum. Actually, just shifted down the second there. <clears throat> Car is really consistent. You have to drive it really smooth. You have to make sure that you don't over rev it in the turns because you do lose a little bit of traction. I do have crash control off. So maybe that's a little bit of the difference. The only other thing that I could maybe see that I can improve upon is the braking distance. I don't know if Rowdy, if you use like maybe a little bit lower brake pressure. But I like to brake a little bit later, but then I drive pretty hard. So it's more of a personal preference. That's not really anything that you did wrong. We're gonna run the wheels off here and get a dirty lap, but I'll show you the lap here. So I was able to beat it, and I'm assuming this is gonna be maybe in the top 500 or right at it. So I was able to beat that. So when I come back, I'll have my Mustang and uh, we'll put it against this when I can actually do a rival racing against myself. So we'll see you when I have mine out here. See you in a bit. As the rival, and actually it did turn out pretty good. It turned out 342nd overall. Just really good. So one thing I noticed right away is our cars sound completely different. I don't 
I don't know why that is. I did put some camshafts. Put a better camshaft in my car. I don't know if that's just the difference. But they definitely sound a lot different. Looks like they're about the same horsepower. About the same speed. With mine, I'm able to brake a little bit later, which I, I really like. It's kind of a, kind of my preference of driving is braking a little bit later. I'm doing the same thing. I'm keeping it in the higher gear so I don't lose the traction on the tires. Looks like we're going to get it in the first full lap. All right, I guess we'll call that a race. So I was able to beat Rowdy's time in my first full lap. The car's difference um, that I saw was that it seems like mine I was able to brake a little bit later with, and um, it turned in a little bit more. It had a little bit more oversteer to it. Um, I did the same thing. I kept the RPMs at about the same level as I did with Rowdy's Mustang, and I think they were both maybe stock transmissions. I'm pretty sure. Um, but let's go ahead and go over to the parts bin. I'll show you what I did with my car. Um, Rowdy, you can make any adjustments that you seem fit. And then um, this will also be sharing it out with everybody else. All right, guys. Uh, see you. I'm going to cut over here in just a second. Thanks. Okay, we're back in the parts bin here. Um, let's go through. And, and it wasn't really so much the part changes. I've actually put this out there before. Um, I have the stock engine, stock drivetrain. And I have the central fuel supercharger. Um, this is going to be the same car that I had out there before from a parts perspective, but I did make some different um, changes in the tune itself. Um, so far we have the stock parts up to the exhaust. And here's where I go with the sport cams and valves. And you can see I gained that RPM range with that. And look at the difference, 7.7 7 acceleration to 8.1 acceleration. And it was a big bump in horsepower too, so I mean that does make a difference. I'm going to have stock valves, stock block, stock pistons, and I have the uh, sport centrifugal supercharger. And I did try to go with the uh, race and back off of the race valves, and I found that the acceleration number was actually lower. It was like 7 9 um, by going up to this and then losing the PI on the other part of it. Um, so this, I thought, was the best setup. I have uh, no intercooler, and stock oil, and, and if I was to add either one of those, it actually reduced my handling, so I did not want to do that. Stock flywheel. Going to have the race brakes, the race spring and dampers, the race front and rear anti-roll bars. We're going to have the full roll cage um, that brought down the PI a little bit and help with the handling. And then we have full weight reduction, which makes this car really good acceleration. We're gonna have the uh, stock clutch. I ran the stock transmission. This is a PI play. I did the sport drive line, <clears throat> just to get the most weight out of it that I could. And I had the race differential. This is a tricky one here. I had to go with the race tires. The uh, sport tire compound reduced the handling to too much, um, and it wasn't worth the PI that I lost. Um, I have the stock front tire width. I have the full upgraded rear tire width. And the rims I went with, I want to believe they're in the middle here now. It must be in the last one. Ah, there we go. Compo Motive MLs. You can find a weight, weight equivalent for that if you want a different wheel. Put the Boss 302 paint job on there so it looks a little bit different. Um, I have the middle size upgraded front rim size to R19s. And the rears are at R19s as well. I usually keep those even. Um, again, no real reason, just aesthetics reasons. Um, had the front full adjustable wing, and there was some choices here, um, and I went with the rear Forza wing just to get the 3PI there. I don't have a, I don't really have a lot of 
and then I want the saline. I don't have a lot of downforce on this particular car. All right, here's the tune. So the tune has kind of been updated. Um, I've been kind of going more extreme with some of my numbers. Um, 28.5 on the tire pressure front and back. That could actually go a little bit lower if you desire. I have the stock gearing. Uh, the alignment is something that I've been changing a little bit. I've been going up even higher. I'm at the negative 3.0 on the front camera, negative 2.5 on the rear. I took the negative 0.2 out of the rear toe. Um, I don't want the back end to come out, so I was trying to make it understeered a little bit more. And then the front caster 7.0, I've just been maxing that out, especially when these numbers are really, really high or really low, depending on how you look at it. Soften these up a little bit. The front anti-roll bar is 22.52. The rear is 19.01. Again, that is to cause a little bit of understeer. That's why this one is greater than that one. Uh, same thing with the springs. Um, 630.3 in the front, 589.9 in the rear. Um, that's to make sure that it still does not oversteer. Um, right height, I, I lowered it down. I was at 5.9. I went down 5.8. I just was worried about Silverstone because it has those really high rumble strips. Kept the front, re uh, front and rear rebound the same, 9.2 and 8.6. Increased the bump stiffness a little bit because I was concerned about those rumble st strips, 4.4 uh, four and 2.4. And I ended up, I took all of it off, and I was getting a little bit loose, so I wanted to add a little bit more to it. So I have 65 and 112, kept those balanced on the downforce. Standard 53% on the muscle car and 140%. And I think that 140% may be why I was able to brake a little bit faster. Um, between Rowdy's car and my, my own, but hard to say. Um, acceleration at 40% and 8% on deceleration. Car works really, really well, and um, hope you guys enjoy this tune, Rowdy. I hope uh, you can incorporate a couple of those changes. I saw you had a pretty good time on the leaderboard already, which I was not able to beat with either car um, in this video, but I will drive a few more laps to see if I can beat your time with uh, my current Mustang. All right, guys, thanks a lot for listening. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you in the next video.